Hello everybody, welcome to the United Way. Manchester United has basically been kicked out of the Champions League. To be honest, I don't see how Manchester United gets into the Champions League with such a performance. So, Manchester United 2, uh, uh, Galatasaray 3. Manchester United today, I wouldn't say they were schooled, but I would say Manchester, the team in general, guys, the mentality of Manchester United, I don't know. If you had to ask me what was the only thing that you... you it, to describe Manchester United in one word, I would say the mentality is super weak. The thing with United is, last year we played by building a very strong defense, and this is what we had to do. This is how we had to do. This is how, how we had to uh, solidify it this season. But what has happened is Manchester United has proven this season that we really have really issues with our center defense and um, midfielders because uh, this is not a situation where I want to go up. It's very uh, to go on one player because I know most of you might go on uh, Onana. Yes, rightfully. So most of you can go on Ten Hag, might go on. I think there's something wrong with Manchester United, which is more than just an individual player. And we are seeing that reflection here. Don't fall into that trap. What the mainstream media will tell you about Ten Hag out, Ten Hag out, it means you are very immature. It means you are just a Manchester United fan this season. Because see, Alex Ferguson has been in this situation. I don't think for one minute that this is an issue that is 100% on Ten Hag. He needs to get some blames. I agree with you guys who think so. But if you think that uh, it is situations like this just happen, just out of thin air, it's, I mean, you're, you're, out of, you're out of your mind. What I'm trying to say is Manchester United, for us to become relevant again in European football, we need not to invest. It's not a problem of money. We need to have a structure on the way we build up our team. The thing is that let's talk about the football today. Today, we know clearly that we can realize it. I mean, the good thing with football is you can see it. You, you might just be a normal fan, but you can see that the issue here was the error but made by the goalkeeper. The team had a very good game. Manchester United playing against an opponent who comes to Old Trafford and opens the game, then how can we not take advantage of it? This is something which is really difficult for me. Normally, when you come and play in, 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 in against, uh, yeah, when you travel away, you try to be defensive and, and use your chances and, and maybe you get a goal. But what we realized today is uh, Manchester United, the team, we don't have a team, if you see what I mean. Because for you to have a team, you need to have a team with, with real characters. I don't even think the game against Brentford, the next game, we, we, we might easily lose that game, honestly. Because the message is going out to all our opponents that if you score, we, if we take a goal, we cannot, we don't have, um, well, how do you call it? We don't have that... Um, mentality you know we don't have a, a powerful mentality to, to to spring to to spring back to to to, to get into the game uh, i would say in regards to my, my my man of the match today i don't know about you i think rasmus holland this is a very unfair thing for this 20 year old danish attacker he's clearly the man of the match he's the one that put us in uh, I, I i think that there's an area that one of the biggest weakness we have in the field is it's not the left back it's the holding midfielder because I really believe that Casemiro playing with Amrabat in the central midfield will bring a huge difference in the way we try to dictate game. But we also need to know one thing. I, United should stop playing that ball from the back. The whole of last season and the last two years, let me give you a good example of what you guys have been trapped into. Last year, or the two years, two years ago, when the media wanted um, De Gea to leave, you guys don't know what the British media is. If you watch this game, on you watch this game and you will understand. You, if you watch this game, you watch the previous games we've had in Manchester United as a club. De Gea has been in a situation where every little mistake is repeated on you guys because if you have no clue the way the media works, it works with your brain. It, it, it does. It's called like. Yeah, the court of um, public opinion, which is you guys who are on us, basically the public who are trying to play into your cycle that the gear wasn't good. And most of us, we knew, we saw the error of the gear. If you have no understanding of the history of Manchester United goalkeeper, we had Fabian Batez here. Fabian Batez is a very good goalkeeper. He was a world champion, top goalkeeper. He came in Manchester United, he did not succeed. We have had people like Bozovic. We have had play the goalkeepers. I mean... It, it is very difficult for you to replace a goalkeeper that has, has a, 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 I mean, stayed in a club for long. I knew this. I wasn't like very, I wasn't really happy. I wasn't happy, you know. I, I, I was happy with the fact that we have a ball playing goalkeeper. But one of the things, I, I wasn't really convinced that Onana 
could come to Manchester United and and basically uh, produce something which we haven't seen, especially you, the fans. I knew that by the time Onana started doing his back passes and making those errors, the Manchester United fan base will climb on him. Will climb on him, and, uh, and now I think there will be. There is already a, there, there must be a lot of videos online talking about Onana out, Onana out because of these errors. I'm not saying he didn't do an error today. I'm not saying that he said he could stop some setting goals or David Gedea could do better. But what I'm trying to say is that I don't think that he was matured enough to to come and feel the boot the, the, the I mean feel the gloves of such of um um a goalkeeper. And uh, for most of you who are very good at uh, just watching a players playing well for Napoli means you might play well Manchester United. Playing well for PSG means you play for Manchester and then playing well in a certain club means you need to have very good recruitment. You need to have a very good strategy of recruitment. And your your network of recruitment must really sync with what the manager wants. This is the problem United doesn't have. Some of the good news of the past two years of Ten Hag coming is that we have been bringing foreign players in Manchester United and not basically foreign players. We have heard about United being interested of Brazilian wonder future wonder kid. Fabrizio Romano have said that. But I just want to tell you that for United to become relevant in that top, top way, I'm talking about the team, not the club, because the club will remain massive, is Manchester United need to get the right recruitment and the right positions. Yes, we have a lot of injuries. We have all our left backs are injured, full stop. That's why you see uh, um, Amrabat playing on the left. But let's come into this game and tell you guys, I was super, super nervous with this game. I thought, well, I mean, uh, obviously going in, I thought United was going to win 2-1. But if you watch the way De La Casarai played, they came to Old Trafford without even scaring. They were not afraid. They opened their game. In a normal game, I, let me just put it this way. If Derek Asarai was playing against a Tottenham Hotspur or maybe a Liverpool or an Arsenal, they will be down by three goals today. Who wants to bet with me? I think that is it. The, I, this, is, this, this is just a good example to show that Manchester United, we are not, we are not, in, um, we are not sinking as a team. I feel so sorry for Tenag because Tenag is the one who has to come and whitewash or clean or clean up everything. I know he is partially... I would just say 50% will go with the manager because obviously he's the one to get the club. But if you think that everything that is happening with Manchester United is only on the manager, then you're wrong. Talking about some players here, because I'm not going to do the player ratings, I am not in the mood of player ratings. But let's do the player ratings because that's why you click the video. Let me see. Goalkeeper, I think the goalkeeper on Nana today was at best four. We lost. Why? Well, I would have given him, given him a three. Four over ten, and I am a Cameroonian. Manana is my, you know, he's from my country, you know. So I, Odana, I give him a four over over five. He did well with the penalty. His errors. Onana needs to limit the way he puts players under pressure. He needs to limit it. Don't tell me about in there. That was the main reason for some of you who don't know that the reason why Onana was kicked out in the Cameroon national team was because we didn't want goalkeepers who put pressure on the midfields. We, that you we give a lot of easy goals by doing those those issues. You need to be with the right defenders. Onana has to limit it. Basically, I think there should be another goalkeeper. The Turkish goalkeeper should be given a chance because we need to be compact. I give him a four. At the left back, Amrabat, I give Amrabat. I mean, Amrabat won the best play in the first half. Um, he, he had a very good game playing out of position. Amrabat, I give Amrabat a six. Honestly, yes, he considered go a six. Why? Because he's Amrabat could say, I don't want to play there. I want to play in the midfield. Who's going to play the three? A six for playing well in a team. In a, Yes, you might say he's the third goal came through him, but he's playing a position in which he's not his position. So I give him a six. Dalo, a six. The central defense midfield, like the defense was so open, so open. I give Veran five, uh, five Lindelof five. I don't want all those things over the last over ten. Casemiro had a red card. He had no choice. What should he do? The first yellow card for me wasn't a yellow card for Casemiro. I don't know what you think, but I give Casemiro a solid uh, six point five. Uh, Bruno Fernandez, I think a five. Bruno didn't do much in the field. I mean, he's playing out of position. Bruno has to be the 10. And um, many will say that the man of the match for them will be Mason Mount. I think Mason Mount is that kind of a player that is good on selection base. And what do I mean by this? I mean, it's a player who gives a lot of energy in the team. And Mason Gam, uh, he was very good in the first two, I mean, the first half especially. His energy levels are so high. He's playing the position he wants to play. I think Mason Mount was a solid, solid six. Um, Marcus Rashford, five. 
No, give Mark Ruffin a six. He gives up. He, I mean, he was a little bit collective. He was more or less collective, not a little bit. He was too collective. I think Mark Ashford is out of confidence now, but he needs to take time to get back into steam. Uh, Ganacho came in six. I don't think we should bury players because this is a collective thing. It will be childish to be giving players four over ten. I, it might not matter. It might not matter to you. For me, it does. But um, uh, uh, Rasmus Holland. I think Rasmus Holland. I give him an eight, and we lost three, and we conceded three goals. An eight. He would have had a hat trick today. It was not that slight offside, which actually was an offside. And um, you had. Um, Ganacho came in a six one. Well, I said, uh, I think, I think, uh, well, basically uh, all the players who came in, you had, uh, uh, who came in again. Anyway, yes, that is where I am. I am with the team, and um, I want to say something. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, he, I think he can. He, when all the team comes in, we let we will start criticizing him if he, the way he he puts a, he will be placing his team. I think the good things I see with Eric Ten Hag today in this game is that he subbed Rash Marcus Rashford. I think he should sub any player because it will be a shocking thing if Eric Ten Hag is sacked. I don't know if Eric Ten Hag should be sacked because he doesn't need he doesn't deserve it. And uh, it will, I, I don't even know why we're talking about this, but Eric Ten Hag today I give Eric Ten Hag a five because um, it is not good enough. And I don't think United will qualify for the second round of the Champions League. That's 100% already. Well, that there is a 70% chance, let me put it this way, that United will not qualify for the second, uh, for the Champions League, uh, from the group stage of the Champions League. That's uh, already clear. Anyway, guys, who do you think uh, is to be blamed for the defeat today? Tell me what you think. What is your opinion? Who did you like in the game and what you didn't like? This is more imp important. Anyway, we will talk five things which we learned about the game in, uh, in uh, tomorrow. But for today, I am so disappointed, guys. With that all end, guys, uh, love this speaking to you. And uh, hopefully we'll have a chat. But guys, please make sure you click a like on the video and share. And uh, yeah, talk to you soon, guys.